Hey guys, I'm Cassim. And I'm Fiona Nova. And you're listening to the Cream Team Dream Stream, sponsored by the fine folks at HeartAudioCables.com. Use code KWIO at checkout at HeartAudioCables.com to get 15% off your entire order. That's right. And we're also available wherever you listen to your podcasts, including Apple and Spotify. Thanks for, thanks thanks for, for, li- listening. Thanks for, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Great work. Hell yeah. That made me cum. Oh, you better believe we are recording. And yeah, I didn't 100%. just hit it because you said that. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cream Team Dream Stream. We are 66% of your hosts. We're also a day late. Are we a dollar short? Stay tuned to find out. I'm Cash. With me is Case, as always. I'm fresh off my trip from Austin. I'll tell you guys all about it. Um, I told, I'm a little under the weather, so sorry for my nasally uh, uh, sound, but um, I just had to hop onto the pod today to find out what the hell happened at the Wonka experience that Case went to this weekend that I couldn't make it. The whole time I was on vacation, vacation, uh, I was out of town. I was like, I really fucked up. I feel like that would have been the perfect stream, but I'm glad that you went and I, I need the download of it. We have a bunch of news to talk about. Um, and I'll give you my lowdown on Austin, but it's been, uh, it's been quite a few days. And obviously I've been, I've been struck with some sort of mm-hmm. cold, flu. Curse. I was around, um, my friend Jamie has two kids. One of the kids just has like snot perpetually oh. right underneath each nostril. And um, I had to have come from that, or it could have come from the airport. I took a COVID test, so far so good. Uh, so I'm, I'm all good over here today. I just sound bad, which yeah. is par for the course. Yeah, I mean, I think you sound, you know, like a king, Cass. I Cass him said, I'm so sick, Case. I don't know if I can do the podcast. I said, you're doing it. This is for <laughs> yeah, you, Cass. This is for your that's health. That's right. <clears throat> um, yeah, we got a quota. We got to hit it. Dude. Yeah. I was like, the, the man upstairs isn't going to just take I'm sick for an answer, okay? Mm-mm. <laughs> Who's nope. the man? You guessed, Jeff. You, we, I did yeah. go, though. I did go to the Oompa Loompa. Uh, one, wonderful World of Wonka experience. L.A., uh, and I streamed yeah. it. I guess I could pull up. I could pull up the um, VOD maybe just to give you a taste. I don't know. The problem with I mean, the VOD is it's just me wandering around with a camera, uh, so I don't know how well I was honestly capturing the. Event. Yeah, if there's if there are moments that you think would be cool to show, like I am curious. I'm very curious about it, um, yeah. and I can I can even buy you some time while you do that. Okay. Uh, I can. I, I'll, I'll give you my rundown of the weekend. I went to. Um, Austin on Thursday to go shoot a couple episodes of um, the uh, my old podcast uh, crew that I did pajama pants with. They have a podcast in Austin on the Your Mom's House Network. It's called Not Today, Pal. Uh, does gangbusters. Okay, mm. does really good. I haven't been down there to shoot the pod. I've been down there once, but it was before the pod sort of launched. Um, so it, it was uh, essentially a return uh, a pajama pants reunion us three on their new pod and it was great went really well what i really enjoy uh about going down to austin is like mainly me and rob essentially really bond over what we're going to be eating uh, at, on any given moment or on any given day and two of the best restaurants i've ever been to are right there in austin texas and i've, I've mentioned them before but they're uh um uh, uchi which is a sushi place and a uh a mexican place called uh suerte and some of the best tacos i've ever had and some of the best sushi i've ever had right down there in, in austin texas so we essentially plan a trip around going to eat around these places and then we try and we try and say it's to get together to do a pod but ultimately it's just to gorge ourselves <laughs> and um and and we spent Oh geez, I think there was four of us at the at Uchi at the sushi place. Uh, it's not a humble brag or anything. This is this is a problem. But the bill was like seven hundred dollars. Oh wow! And it was yeah. yeah. No, it's like I don't think any alcohol. Maybe there was like maybe one person had alcohol out of the three of us. Yeah. Uh, Live is easy. Says no barbecue. There was um, I did eat at this place called Laura, which is Asian fusion barbecue. Um, and I had that, but no straight up barbecue. And I know you guys, oh, you got to go to 
Terry Peas or whatever. You know, they always have some very famous barbecue place. I had it last time I was there. It's fine. I really do enjoy it. But the, the barbecue places, like the really good ones, are it's like a scene. There's like hundreds of people, I feel like, trying to get in. Um, and it's not necessarily a quick experience, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so a lot of white, a lot of white folks eating barbecue. So, so we did the pod, and it was funny. And I think you might get a kick out of this because there was some kind of, I wouldn't call it a beef. It's not really a beef, but there's a back and forth between them and a one Howie Mandel going on. Okay. Right and <laughs> it was. And I thought of you the whole time because I thought you would have really got a kick out of this whole situation. Howie Mandel um, came on their pod as a guest. I don't know how many weeks ago. Um, he was like kind of like a uh, one of these guys that comes in. He had a, apparently a huge entourage and um, almost like didn't know where he was and like was very like, all right, are we doing this? Like, where do I sit? It's like, very business e type of uh, guests where they come in and just fly in a bunch of folks fly out. And while he was there, it didn't seem like <laughs> it seemed like the vibes were off. Sometimes you do a pod, both, both parties can be cool and great and funny, but sometimes the vibes just don't necessarily match. And it made for, I think kind of an awkward pod. And I guess he has a reputation of this and there is a youtube channel out there called too lazy to try mm -hmm. and he did one of these you know how we talk about these youtube channels that do like exposés or uh, just sort of like in-depth analysis about one specific thing and in these days it could be about anything he did one on on um howie mandel being a podcast guest <laughs> and uh, he sort of he sort of picked apart and deep dive um and took some stuff that Jamie and Rob, who do the who do the the Not Today Pal pod, um, they had Jim Norton on an episode, and and they got to talk about like, yeah, we had one guest. They never named him or anything. It's like we had one guest. It was like the vibes were a little off. It was just a little weird. Mm -hmm. And then um, it was just deduced that it was Howie Mandel. And so while I'm staying at Jamie's, Howie Mandel. Um, I guess like dropped a response to all this <laughs> and and i guess he had like dm'd her about like hey i'm he, he sent her which i think is like kind of a okay move if if you were rumored to be bad on a pod you send the person in that pod like hey i'm sorry if i was bad uh i i thought it was great i'm a big fan or whatever which is what he did and then she said thank you it was great to have you she didn't like say that she didn't validate what he was looking for, which was, yeah, we were talking about you and um, it threw him for a loop, I guess. And he, he said, so I was the guest. And so that, and she didn't respond to that. And I think, which is probably good because he ended up like showing her DMS on his show or whatever. Oh my God. Shut up Google. And uh, it was basically him spending, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes on, um, his pod defending himself, but also like throwing himself under the bus because he was like, I'm a I'm a fucking lunatic. I'm a basket case. I'm a big fan of the Sopranos. I'm sorry if I came. He was very like self-conscious. He seemed really, really in his head about it. And um, so when we were filming our pod, it was like that morning. So I was like, you guys have to address what is going on because this is like great for your pod, you know? Yeah. And, like, a lot of people are going to want to tune in just to hear what you, and you guys look great because you didn't say anything mean. You didn't throw anyone under the bus. Somebody deduced that it was him. And like, you still didn't say anything mean. You didn't say anything mean in the DMS. And so it was kind of really fun to be in this like middle of this, like uh, totally harmless, unimportant um, quote unquote beef between them and Howie Mandel. And by the way, like I had to convince Rob to like even address it because Rob, always steers away from controversy like really hates being targeted in any way and uh i thought it was really i thought they did a great job addressing it and um it may or may not make it in their show i don't know but i thought it was uh there's a couple people in here that <laughs> it's a super nice beef there's a, it's a couple people that listen to that pod in here and uh 
and it's sort of like everything I've said is already publicly out there. So it'll we'll see what happens if they decide to. And now one of the but, stuff that's not cast go. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I wish it is really not not a whole lot. They're just not the type of folks to like sling arrows, you know. Yeah. And I'm I'm kind of standing there with their producer being like, you don't have to sling arrows, but you can definitely take advantage of, uh, you know, the 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 attention, the eyeballs, because people will probably be looking for um, some sort of response. We ba- like I I was barely a guest, you know. I was like we barely even talked about me or anything. Um, there was a nice little surprise that happened during it. I don't want to spoil that, but uh, it was a really those the pod flew by. It was really great. And uh, yeah, that was my trip to Austin. Otherwise, I, I we sat around, we played a lot of Settlers of Catan, we ate, um, and uh, yeah, just hung with their kids. Um, and it was a really, really uh, nice uh, few days. Obviously, hate being away from my girls over here. Oh, I yeah. Hate it. All the girls uh, on their own? I uh, All three girls were on their own over here. I don't think I've spent that much time. Oh, is the, is the audio doubling, guys? It shouldn't be now. I think it should be fixed. Okay. Sorry. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't think we've spent that much time apart since we've been together. So it was, uh, you know, one of these. It's like, oh, what will happen if I'm gone for four days? Will I, will I come back to a bunch of bodies? Will there be, will there be a new man that replaced me? Will it, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. It, she did a good job. Nothing. Everything is as it was, except I brought a sickness in and I feel bad because like all night I was probably just like snoring and sneezing and you ever do that? I don't know if you, uh, you and Kendall, but if you get so sick and you're so loud that you wake up and your partner's not even in the bed, it's like, that's oh, happened to me. Yeah. Sleep, Kendall's a couches. real trooper though. So less so, less so with her, yeah. but that has happened to me in the past. Yeah. Kendall, I'll just wake up and Kendall will be like sandwiched between eight pillows. But that's unfortunately sometimes when I'm not even sick. It's just when I'm snoring like a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, I started, I started snoring, uh, maybe a couple years ago. So this is it's a function of not working out. Yeah, it's worse um, when I don't work out too, which is crazy that I'm even snoring then because like I'm like, hitting that gym twenty four seven. Dude, I know, dude. You're funny. We look great. That's how I say. <laughs> Absolutely. Howie it's Mandel, good to be back. Howie Mandel is one of those figures that like. I wouldn't think of as having a fan army that could like do harm to you mm. if, if if you catch Howie Mandel's ire. But then I'm like, right. oh wait, he is actually super famous. It's one of those people it's that's weird. kind of stealth super famous, but he's been on network TV for like 40 years. I was thinking about this too. It, it's like he's way more famous than we probably realize, but he's very low key. Like he's. On America's Got Talent, right? He's mm-hmm. a, a judge on that show. Obviously, Deal or No Deal. He's the creator of uh, Bobby's World, which is where I personally... Yeah. That's why I can't help but respect him just a little bit. Um, I don't particularly tune in for his comedy. I, I don't know if his uh, brand of comedy is, is that uh, in which I um, am drawn to. I don't know if he still does comedy or not. I don't even know what his... Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen him do stand-up. I feel like he was a stand-up, um, but I also know he's like a famous. Um, uh, he has OCD, you know. He's, he's a, like a germaphobe, which is a, one of his, I think, better qualities. And so, uh, have you ever seen the clip is, of, of Dana White walking off of his podcast? I did. I saw that for the first time while I was over there. Oh, okay. I, I I don't know what caused it what happened but it just essentially it's dana white saying i'm tired of fucking podcast i'm tired of being a guest on podcast and he just gets up and leaves it seems like they had a beef or something and i don't know if anyone can shit any light on it but uh, yeah it's hard for me to think of two guys i care about less so that being a beef is sort of like yeah i, I guess it's i mean it's sort of interesting but i'm like oh yeah i mean it's hard for me to pick a side here <clears throat> I guess I'd actually yeah. be on the side of Howie Mandel over Dana White, and that's a real achievement for Dana White. Yeah, they both like they're both like super hairless. Like it's just like the way the maybe it's the way the light was refracting off their heads into each other's eyes. Yeah, sort of like you know signaling some sort of response that that they couldn't handle. Well, you that go bald crazy. actually because you have too much testosterone. So when two bulls like that meet in the woods of podcasting, that's someone's right. got to go. 
And I guess Howie Mandel won in that sense. That's right. Yeah, yeah. One, two enter, one leaves. Yeah. He stomped yeah. his uh, designer Air Jordans on the ground and, and scrubbed them against the dirt, and he scared uh, Howie yeah, he Mandel is. away. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great observation that he's got a very unique aesthetic, I think, these days. He's very into fashion mm -hmm. or what seems like fashion. Um, I will tell you this, and I actually did this apology on their pod, but I don't know if it'll make it in. But um, his he has a younger son called Alex Mandel, and I think he he emailed me in like 2012 because I think he was a fan of the YouTube and he wanted to collab. But um, I just it just came to me like recently when I, all this Howie Mandel stuff was going on, and I didn't I never responded. Um, because I was out of my mind uh, <laughs> back in those days, but but I, I issued a public apology to him. Um, but but the email was very much like, "Hey, I'm Alex. Howie Mandel's my dad. I really like your stuff. I'd love to collab. Would love to get you on my show or something like that." And uh, and uh, I I don't like to be the type of person that doesn't respond. But sometimes I think, especially back in in those days when there, that stuff was coming in quite a bit, it's like For impossible sure. to really like respond to everyone or if you do like they just want to they want you to respond so they can get their hooks in for something else. Mm -hmm. it's like sometimes safer to do that now send them in dude send yeah. in your responses send dude, in let's your get emails. howie mandel's son on the pot let's get him dude i should email him back and then have him ghost me for 12 years i think that would be appropriate you should uh, getting a reply after 12 years is very funny so <laughs> like hey man you still interested is this still <laughs> that's good? all you say <laughs> he was like I don't know how old that 18 when he sent that he's probably 30 now. Hey dude, uh, uh, schedule just cleared up. Are you, are you good this week? You know, I've met a couple celebrities kids and I would say before having done that, if someone introduced themselves as I'm Howie Mandel's son, I'd be like, that's kind of sad that he feels like he has to do that. But now I kind of find it refreshing because so many celebrities kids like changed all three of their names just to try to hide their yeah. connection, even though they're still using every connection they have their dad to get yeah. ahead or mom to get ahead in the <laughs> industry they want the illusion of them sort of detaching but they need all the help from the nepotism as yeah. they can get if i was howie yeah. mandel's kid i would just cover my scalp in nair every day just to really cement the look <laughs> i get a dog it's tag something about wearing, howie mandel's son. it's something about being bald and wearing like purple tinted glasses indoors that not anyone can just do like yeah. you have to be a certain level of celebrity for that yeah, he he kind of feels like uh, oh god, who's the guy who runs Amazon? I'm so bad with remembering. Jeff him. Bezos. Yeah, he feels like Jeff Bezos is like shadow clone. Like he put I up the Naruto up. fingers and a couple Howie Absolutely. Mandel's popped off. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm looking up Howie Mandel's net worth. Um, as of 2024. Oh, this is really low. 60 million. <laughs> Only 60. I thought, yeah, I thought this guy was, I thought he was in the hundreds of mil. I thought he got 10% of every deal or no deal case that got open. Yeah, he gets he gets a little taste from every yeah, case. Yeah, that's the connection to the banker. He should have been flexing that. Oh, man. By the way, he's so bald now. I really loved his curly mullet that he had back in the day. Yeah. He's a, whole, he's, he's a much more um, relatable person with the hair. Now with the, the bald, I think everyone's going bald these days, man. It's, losing your it's hair so really fun. damages some men you know you're doing cool stuff you're making bobby's world you're voicing gremlins you lose your hair and you turn to the dark side you're like you know what i just want people to guess 50 50 style if a, if a suitcase has money in it was he a voice of a gremlin i think that's that's what i know him for is bobby's world and he was like uh -huh. the voice of gizmo which is not something i would think oh, about he did gizmo mm-hmm Dude, I love that for him, and I love that for me. I know. He's, that's why I can't hate him, because I did like Bobby's World, and I do love Gremlins. I love Bobby's World. It was it was wild, and um, I don't know. There There is something now that we're older, it's like, I always like squint a little bit when, when somebody's like, yeah, I'm making a kid show. <laughs> I, gotta, I'm, I, gotta I think it's the way they're saying it, Cass. If they walk up to you, they're like, making a kid's show. I'm making and and you know what they do? They do the same thing that that guy that was caught on TikTok at the snooker championship. Did you see this guy? Oh this guy? my god! Is that, that in the rundown? The, the oh, smelling? it's not. It's it's. I don't not, think you can show it. I. It's not because I didn't know how to show it, but we can talk about it. Um, but first, I need to hear about okay 
a yeah. Wonka experience. So just for a little a uh, little context, this is very shaky cam style footage for me. But here's the entrance to it. Um, okay. Yeah. It's you know pretty standard entrance, but it was in like a just kind of you know like a downtown LA warehouse kind of alleyway situation, which is not actually that surprising for events like this. Um, but if you want the whole kind of entrance experience, Cass. Yeah. Oh no! If my if my computer will hold up, yeah, here it is. Oh my god! It's in an open, where just one warehouse space. Just one warehouse space. I honestly think okay. it looks a little. It looks like my internet connection wasn't holding up too well, unfortunately. But it, I think it was a little smaller overall than the oh photos. Oh my god! Like I'm way bigger than. What did they expect you to do there? <laughs> it wasn't built. It was built for Oompas. I you know I, I'm in their territory now, Cass, and I'm that Oompas. is. That is uh that reminds me of um Spinal Tap with the Stonehenge. I'll unmute yeah. it. The, right. the music was like super loud. Which I guess cuz my mouth is so close to the phone you can still hear me, but I can barely hear myself talking. I don't know if you can see it chat, but there's a performance up there. And yeah, there <laughs> were like there were performances, but it was mostly just people kind of um just sort of milling around like the actors were a little standoffish i would say which is fair in the odd i think it still carried over some of that original vibe of like nobody knew why the fuck they were there everyone kind of uh, had the understanding that they'd already been suckered and that that we were all fools for paying to be at this event and that kind of felt like the unspoken energy of the room but i will say eventually they start doing performances it looks like okay. some of them have been muted because some of them were basically covers copyright yeah. um Oh, but, what's going on there? So two Oompa Loompas were on stage. This was my favorite part, probably. Two Oompas came out just to kind of... They basically just fucked around for like 10 minutes. They kind of just wandered through the crowd. But eventually they... Oh, this is probably why it's muted and it's my favorite part. Eventually they play uh, Scream by Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson. And they just danced around for like five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, there was like a... Oh, there they go. They almost... Um, they kind of came for Kendall. He's going for the kiss. But then I think I intimidated him by accident with my powerful masculine aura, and I yeah. scared him off. What the hell? Yeah. And then there was a... What the hell? That's the Oompa Loompa lady. She was kind of emceeing the performance section of it. Uh, but anyway, it was mostly music. Oh, there, was, there was a very nice but kind of um, ranty comedian. I'm trying to find the music guy because he was like kind of going, going a little hard. But I do think about half the crowd is already gone. And yeah, half the crowd did leave. Oh yeah, so then there's just a lot of music kind of like this. <laughs> wow. Honestly, I liked this guy. Yeah, that's Tipsy something or other. Um, Live and Sleazy might remember his, his actual handle. But anyway, that was the basic vibe. It was like a... Um, it was a weird kind of hodgepodge of influencers who I guess were probably invited and were only there for like 10 minutes to take photos and leave. And then I guess just, uh, you know, online troll humans like myself who read the original article and were like, well, this has... To, I mean, what will this be? So then we just we just went... And I'd say about half the people left before the performance started. At one point, it was, like, pretty full. And then I, people were like, I don't know what's going on. It took about an hour and a half for the oil performances to start. I guess longer if you showed up on time. And all that was really it, in it the where... It was a four-hour? It was a four-hour four event. It did actually... If, you, if I'd showed up at 5.30, it would have lived up to the four hours because I think it didn't end until about 9 or 9.30. Um, but there was... The only thing you're really doing there was mill about listen to the extremely loud music and take photos in front of like, they had a cease and desist letter from Nathan Fielder that they blew up and put on a wall, which I thought was pretty nice. <laughs> it's also the fact they said he was, they said he might be coming. It's a wild move for an event to make. Did they just Nathan Fielder, Nathan Fielder? I think they did. I, I mean, I think they were kind of maybe hoping by mentioning someone like him, he might just show up because it was so bold to say he would be there. And that's, sort of in the realm of what he does though not really but no instead they just got the hard season assist but i mean they also said That's timothy so chalamet and uh zach galifianakis might be there um 44 dollars 
was it worth it? Live and Sleazy says, and Live and Sleazy, I, I often think because the things he types sound so absurd, they're probably a bit, but I know they're not. It turns out the cotton candy they had was laced with THC, which is wild to hear because maybe I, I didn't no. get the cotton candy. But I don't, I didn't hear that mentioned anywhere. I'm hoping if they, when they gave it to people, they at least said that. Are you serious? Uh, that Could is not I have something I do until just now. Relapsed if I would have gone to the Wonka experience. I mean, cotton yeah. candies. Something I probably would have tried, Case. It was reported by Angela Yang on, of NBC. Jesus Christ. Oh, man. This, oh. They're bringing the controversy back. That is wild. I, I did not hear any mention of that while I was there. And I did, did ask for did cotton candy. Did you get candy. any footage? Did you get any footage of the cotton candy? Uh, there's people walking sure. around eating it for sure. And at one point, I walk <laughs> up to a guy and I'm like, can I still get some cotton candy? And he's like, yeah, they'll be back in a minute. But the cotton candy was oh, totally empty. God. Dude, that is a major no. I'm going to tell you right now. That's a no-no. That's a pretty big no-no, you lacing your you food do with that. drugs without telling people. It's not so, it was extremely loose. If I was it was hard like they'd clearly put a little money into getting like renting props or at least renting like a big glow-up balloon wall, which was the main thing in the room that was kind of like visually like, "Oh." Uh, but mostly for the first hour and a half it was just like the unknown mask guy well, well not the guy but just the unknown mask they had someone in it wandering around hiding behind a mirror um and then if you walked up to the performers they would like lightly improvise with you but mostly kind of felt had the energy of like please don't talk to me <laughs> which maybe was keeping it authentic to the original experience yeah they had a they had black grandpa joe oh, I, th I thought that was a white guy i talked to grant i talked to the grandpa from it. it was they had like a white guy in a bed but maybe there was also a black grandpa joe Wow, they had a black Grandpa Joe. Um, part okay, the part that you were most surprised by was. Mm, I mean, the thing I'm most surprised by now is hearing that that cotton candy <laughs> THC in it. I would say the thing I'm most surprised by is I think just because I really enjoy live performances, um, mm -hmm. even if they're in like an insane. I, I just the performers were being real troopers in my opinion because they just kind of, especially like the the couple music acts they had seemed to just be kind of vibing up there, even though the context could not have been stranger. And the audience was like, the energy was like, kind of like nervous online kid a little bit by the time the performances came around. Like it was definitely music yeah. designed to, to sort of dance and like get pumped to. And uh, everyone was just like, <laughs> wow. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I love the commitment to the bit. I really like how you followed Fall through with the whole thing. I think that's it seemed like a lot of seems like a lot of people were there. It seemed like the lighting was a little off in certain sections, like in the corner, you know, where they couldn't afford the lights. Mm -hmm. It's pretty dark. Um, they were hope they were hoping to get sort of lit from the uh, some of the stuff in the center. Chats bring up. I did um, buy. Uh, I bought it. It was actually I bought Kendall a drink too, but I bought two fifteen dollar drinks. One of which was a Thai iced tea, just covered in green frosting. <laughs> which was pretty. <laughs> the iced tea was fine, but the green frosting was pretty disgusting. Was there food? There was, and Kendall got some of the food too, and she said that was also fine. So whoever was doing it um, was doing a better job, seemingly, than the original person. Like, there was actual edible stuff, apparently too edible in one case, uh, and there were it had, like, a little bit of a look to it. Although there wasn't a huge mushroom, which I felt like was the main event of the original Glasgow one. Oh, and then and then the um the Sad Oompa Loompa did do a Q and A at the end, and it does feel like she's riding this for all it's worth. So good for her. Oh, so she actually was there. Yeah, and someone was like, "Are you gonna do more with this?" And she's like, "It's dying down a little bit, but Halloween's <laughs> coming around the coming around in a couple months, and it'll be back for Halloween." Was she? Is she like British? Is she? She's uh, Scottish. She's Scottish. Oh, yeah. So Scottish. everything I just said, but you know, Shrek, obviously. Yeah, that's right. Perfect. Wow. Um, you guys can follow that uh, follow that action as it unfolded on your VODs, right? Still there. It's still there if you're curious. It's I, 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 or I watching the footage back. I finally ordered a gimbal for my phone because I was like, this is too, this is unwatchably shaky. Ooh, um, but yeah, but you know, I, there's some moments of clarity in there, so feel free to kind What'd of you get? pop Did you around. get the Osmo? I got the something 360. Some it's like a cheaper Osmo. I was like, I won't because I, I, in my experience. You know, if it mostly works, it works. Yeah, I, I, I have an Osmo and I, I don't really know how to use it. Uh, next time, I'll just let you borrow it. It's like, 
it's cool when you get it going, but I just don't know how to get it going. There's a lot of oh. settings. So you so did miss out. The, the takeaway is you did miss out, Cass. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it, it feels like that, that way. All, all I got was a, a cold. Mm-hmm. So uh, who's laughing now? You could have been lightly um, bored for an hour and then broken your sobriety by accident. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's wild to me. Because sometimes I do worry about that. Um, just like, because every other like canned drink um, at supermarkets these days, like they all kind of have the same branding, like the CBD drinks versus just like a, a regular seltzer drink. They all kind of look the mm-hmm. same and you really have to be careful. And uh, I know Ashley sometimes orders, like she's, she's had a couple CBD drinks here and I always have to like do a double take and read the print on there. And a CBD is not a big deal. That wouldn't ruin my sobriety, but like, I, I'm just saying it's like the, even the THC lay stuff, it's all kind of like, they all kind of look the same. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I would, I would be pissed if that happened yeah. to me and I was a sober guy. All that heroin kombucha <laughs> they keep selling in supermarkets. Too much. Yeah. Too I much. love kombucha, but I love them both separately. Um, right. Since we very vaguely talked about it, um, there was a guy who was caught at the, uh, in the audience of a snooker championship in England that was happening. And this kind of went all over uh, TikTok and, and went viral and sort of everyone brought out their pitchforks. Um, if you do find video of it, just everyone's asking to like find and play the incredibly video the upsetting video Sorry. face is blurred. Oh, um, oh, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, I can't find the one where his face is blurred there. So that's, so you don't, might not even need to show it because it's kind of it's really is disturbing. Um, and you guys that are really interested can can find it. But um, it's essentially a here's a, here's guy a blurred looks photo. Like a dad. Of this. Okay, yeah. yeah, here's a photo. Um, you can so guess how close audience. he was. Um, this photo is essentially like one twentieth of of how gross the encounter was. He essentially like goes up to him, nuzzles into his neck and bites the kid's ear and says something and it's not like it doesn't look parental in any way and um so obviously all the folks online were like we got to fucking find this dude and i guess they found him i've seen his name online i i think the there is a police report that's been filed i just haven't seen like a uh a follow-up to it yeah that's all so it if was this is gross. if if this microphone was a child he, he does this to it I fucking catch you. <laughs> <laughs> like so, that's what it looks like. <laughs> and just watching you do that creeps me out. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, and out. also, I mean, it's unfortunate that it happened at the snooker championship, which already sounds to me like just a pedophile championship. I don't know. I didn't know what snooker <laughs> is till this. I was like, oh, I guess the pedophile was at the pedophile show. Do it where they yeah. snooker. <laughs> I, mean, I would be scared to bring a, a kid to an event called snookering. I just sound uh, off to me. You're right. It's not a great name. It's like borderline a slur. It's very <laughs> close to just many other things. Too much. Yeah. Too much. Don't take your kids. So hopefully that, that guy, um, hopefully he's just a, uh, hopefully he's his dad and he just like was weird for a second. That's what I hope. That- it's like, I can't really watch that and be like, nah, I, I can't explain away the sensuality in which he did that. Work. What if his wife and his son have, they're, they're the same height and they have an extremely similar haircut. So the whole <laughs> time, she's just a short hair queen. He's like, thinks he's next behind his wife the whole time. Oh my God. That's, I hope, I hope that's you know, what's going on. What's fucked up though is, is this, could you arrest this guy for this even? Like, could this hold up in court to get him in any trouble? It feels, watching it, you're like, yeah, he should be buried under a prison, probably. But I think, I think for this one action, I think you've got to do an investigation. This one action leads to an investigation. And in this investigation, you interview the kid, you interview the rest of whoever lives there. And if it's found out that anything is going on, you take the kid away if he's under his guardianship, and then you prosecute the dad. Um, yeah, child endangerment. This has to count as child endangerment. It's like it's, it's one of the horniest like encapsulations I've seen in a while f- for not having like actual sex in public. It was. It's like it is wildly horny. The energy he is putting straight into that kid's ear. It is truly disturbing. And then the look to the camera where they both mug to the camera, like 
The part that I think that's throwing everyone is that they both looked at the camera and went like, hey, like if you were doing something illicit, you would probably be like, oh, put your hat down or something, you know, and just like, oh, shit, I'm busted. Like whenever they catch a guy cheating on his girlfriend, like in a baseball game stadium, you know, um, this guy was just, ah, he did this. And it seemed like he was not worried in the slightest that he was doing anything potentially inappropriate. That is a wild way to try to play off getting caught being a pedophile on camera to like just Jim from the opposite, but like times 10, just be like, Ooh, <laughs> oops. <Yeah. clears throat> Look right down the barrel and just be like, I'm a less. <laughs> Damn. Well, what a terrible situation. I really, I, I have been paying attention to uh, that story. I'll, I'll break it maybe tomorrow during our Patreon. If there's any new information, I do have something here. From our very own Live and Sleazy. Ooh. This was sent to me by Tasty, who I think Live and Sleazy sent this to. Um, it's called CelebritiesBreath.com. And it's, you guessed it, Celebrities Breaths in a jar for you to purchase. 100% authentic. No way they could fake this. <laughs> I mean... It's uh, the fact it's just them photoshopped in front of like a <laughs> for, for the audio listeners. The, the website is just weird photoshops and seemingly one AI image of uh of celebrities in front of like a a high-end protein powder style jar, like a a black jar kind of behind like Steve Carell's face. Um and Lionel Messi I think that looks kind of like an AI Lionel Messi holding a jar of of nothing of air is air though yeah some people might call this website bare bones minimal i say clean <laughs> modern okay jeff bezos tom cruise is on sale yeah tom tom cruise is on sale jeff bezos is 40 bucks is there a more expensive jar of breath why is it all men okay now we're at the ladies see taylor's there's no way there's no way that tom hanks is air or Idris Elba's, no disrespect to them, is worth the same amount as Taylor Swift's hair. The amount of perverts that would actually want Taylor Swift's breath has got to be way higher than the amount that want. Yeah. I was about to say Colin yeah. Firth, but then I was like, eh, maybe some people want Colin. At least Steve Carell's, Steve Carell's breath. Um, I don't know how this is still up there. Um, I want to know how many sales. And... Um... Do they we have, like that somebody's a go-getter like this, like a little hustler? They have a pre-order for Tom Cruise's uh, breath. So just know it's it's sold out currently, but you can pre-order the refresh of stock. I guess like, could you, can you, is the ultimate plan to get away with something like this to just be like, it was for charity and it was actually kind of an ironic statement. Yeah, this was art mm -hmm. and uh, we're poking fun at, at modern capitalism by uh ob doing something that's obviously fake and i made 60 grand ironically yeah yeah. Uh, Dude, yeah if you're doing this fake if you're faking this are you putting in the effort of like putting in different kinds of breaths in the jars or are you just sending out just air jar just air jar? i guess you could yeah. you could try to put a little bad breath smell in there so people because that's cheap you can like buy a spray bottle of like breath smell um, and then maybe when people open it, they're like, wait a minute, that actually smelled like something. But do I respect the hustle of this? Mm. Okay, I guess if you're buying Celebrity Air, you do have it coming a little bit, for sure. Like you spent, it, it's like when you, uh, it's like when one of those conservative senators has a scandal and it's broken by his like sycophantic staff that have been working for him for 10 years. And they're like, yeah, would you believe he was mistreating like male prostitutes i did work for him for 20 years and i'm just telling you this but, but like if you're buying air yeah. you're kind of in a similar boat for me where i'm like uh i don't know why are you buying celebrity air it's it's a little bit of shame on you fool me once um this is also reeks of those ai experiments with the guys like all right ai create me a business that I could get off the ground in the next 24 hours and make ten thousand dollars by the end of the month doing that takes no resources, no skill, minimal inventory. Uh, and, and it would just tap into the 
sort of like the trends in popular culture, obviously fart jars and things like that from like Amarantha proven to be quite lucrative quite for her. Lucrative. Um, and there, that's got to be like absolute minimal, minimal inventory. Like all you're paying for is a glass jar. Got Maybe you do plastic jars and those <laughs> things are like 10 cents a jar. Like you got to go that's plastic. Just a, you think you get pissed if you get a plastic jar instead of a glass jar? Definitely, you'd love the you'd love for it to come in like a cryo tube that you like twist open, like you know in the movies when they're uh, unlocking like nuclear uranium. Yeah, yeah. the smoke billows out. You enter your key pass. Yeah, and then it just kind of aerosol sprays out Steve Carell's fetid breath directly into your nose. (laughs) The the reason I think it's got to be a joke is the fact that Steve Carell is on there. Like, not that I like Steve Carell, but I just can't. I feel like the pervert laser beam of the internet just isn't pointed that squarely at steve carell i don't yeah i i can't i can't put him in that same four square right there i just yeah. don't see him on the same level and, and I hate russell crowe russell crowe is yeah. another slightly odd choice and if you want to russell, smell russell russell crowe's breath, breath you just have to go to like a bar in la and wait yeah it's like cigs and beer mm-hmm. for sure um i did sign up for the uh the email list oh good so it, it, if you scroll down to the bottom, I believe there is a, uh, do you want to become a breath catcher, <laughs> which is a, I think they're content creator program. Oh which God. I signed up for. So if you are near a, a celebrity, maybe you can just sort of like get them to do a sneeze or a breath or something mm-hmm. into the jar, which I'm about to do. Well, but, now I'm uh, back in support yeah, of it. I'll this let you a, know if I get one back. This is a new way to harass celebrities, which I'm always in support of. So, um, just to considering to uh, desanctify every part of their body and let them know that it belongs to the people. Actually, Colin Firth, your breath even is ours, and it is it is meant to be commodified. The king's breath. Um, thank you, Live and Sleazy, for sending that over. That made for a wonderful uh, part of the pod. Um, I wanted to talk to you about this Jerry Seinfeld news. Oh Have yeah, you I was seen this? looking at this yesterday. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you could pop that up there. Um, uh, let me find the clip. Real I thought quick. he was a pretty liberal dude, but uh, <laughs> maybe he's like me and walks the line sometimes. I don't know. I think he's like more more centrist Democrat liberal. And I do think part of their gimmick now is to complain about this stuff. They're sort of meeting the chuds in the middle and, and complaining about woke culture. That's kind of the new or maybe the last five year type of agreement. Let me. Uh, it was easy. OK, yeah, here's the clip. Um and obviously, this a lot of people online are are like finally somebody said it, which is which is great. Um, but I guess we can just play the clip so we know what we're talking about. Just like Nothing a, really affects like a comment from me. People always need it; they need it uh, so badly, and they don't get it. It used to be you would go home at the end of the day. Most people would go, "Oh, Cheers is on. Oh, Mash is on. Oh, Mary Tyler Moore is on. All in the family's on." You just expect it. There'll be some funny stuff we can watch on TV tonight. Well, guess what? Where is it? This is the result of the extreme left and PC crap and people worrying so much about offending other people. Mm-hmm. When you write a script and it goes into four or five different hands, no. committees, groups, here's our thought about this joke. Well, that's the end. That of never point. happened in the they 90s. They move the gates like in skiing. Yeah. Culture, the gates are moving. Your job is to be agile and clever enough that wherever they put the gates, I'm going to make the gate. So it, it, that is uh. weird because he, he, he starts with like the, cons- the standard chud complaint of like PC culture ruining comedy. And then by, by the end, he's a little bit like, the gate's moving. You got you to gotta, you gotta keep up with the times. So I'm like, well, okay. Is he complaining or sort of, yeah. sort of riding the line? Well, not even riding the line. He's like, Taking a line and then taking a slightly different line, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, sometimes I feel like Jerry Seinfeld puts himself up in the. He's like the one putting his own bust in the Comedy Hall of Fame up. You know, like he mm-hmm. walks in there every week and makes sure his shit's shiny. He donated and, a billion um, to the hall so that it has his yeah, name on it. Because he's the most mid stand-up act that's ever lived like i think if you were to find um the most like generic down the middle almost boring borderline observational humor it would just it would just be his act yeah and um 
every jug, it's like the same formats, the same setup. It's the same delivery. There's never any surprises in his act. It is a continuation of what he's been doing for decades. And it's like rarely changed. Just the topics have. And yeah. um, because he's associated with the greatest comedy sitcom of all time as a creator of it. I think by the, by this time, we, we mostly know like that's mostly Larry David's sort of feels that um, way at least. Stink, stink that's been put on that stuff. Um and Seinfeld was an integral part of it, but like maybe not as big of a part of the success of that show than, um, you know, at least his humor isn't imprinted in, in the success of that show as much as Larry David's. But uh, I don't know, the, the whole Cars with Coffees thing, like it just felt like, oh, what are the kids doing? Internet videos? Like, oh, I've got a hundred Porsches. I've got the world's largest Porsche collection. I'll just take one out every week and I'll bring a new person in because they all want to kiss my ass. And then uh, and then we'll go around, we'll talk about the biz. Comedians talking meta comedy is like, oh my God, it's the biggest jack-off session in the world. Like whenever Joe Rogan is talking about like, you know, there's probably only 250 of us. <laughs> actual comedians oh my god i love that clip so much people that are it's so it, it is a little up yeah it's just up their own ass and um you know i, I i'm not I, I love seinfeld the show i'm just not a huge jerry seinfeld fan i also don't hate the guy that much but like he doesn't need to i feel like he doesn't need to do this part like, yeah, it's like Ray Kroc worth, being what, like gourmet food is dead. Yeah, it's like Ray Kroc being like gourmet food is dead. Like, oh, okay, well, you did you did yeah. make McDonald's, so uh, I don't know if, if you'd have yeah. to be complaining about this, although you are still allowed to, I guess. It's like the kind of thing I don't super care about, but he's kind of been like ringing this bell for the last like six years because he's one of those comedic comedians that was complaining about like, I went to a college campus and when I did my bit on how customer service has gotten worse, they barely laughed. It's also odd because he's like, I can't do edgy comedy. I'm like, when did Seinfeld do edgy comedy? Never. When was he like, oh, uh, let's talk about genocide. Let's mine my Jewish heritage for, for laughs. Like, yeah, I, I don't think he's ever been that guy. The edgiest thing would have been the 9-11 uh, episode that me and you read on the show. <laughs> yes, absolutely. The spec script. That was, a, that was the edgiest thing that they've never done. Mm-hmm. So that's Jerry Seinfeld. Um, I don't know. I think he just needs sometimes just needs to like relax. Uh, we we all respect you. I think sometimes he's, he's just looking for a little more respect out yeah. there. We all need a McDonald's to sometimes. Drive. So you yeah. you don't have to make the gourmet complaint. Um, Kanye West to launch Yeezy porn. Now you guys know I have a deep affection for anti semite uh, <laughs> Kanye West. Big fan of his music, but yes, it gets very hard to uh, defend him when, um, well, basically anything that he does outside of music is uh, an embarrassment. And right now, his latest venture is uh, supposedly going to launch his own his own porn company called Yeezy Porn. I still don't know if this is like one hundred percent a joke or not, but it seems like based on this article that there's some sort of wheels in motion. Mm -hmm. um to launch it with stormy daniels is ex uh manager um this is a real big swing the other way from a guy who released a gospel album a couple albums ago who's really up on his jesus and uh you know all about getting people into god's light praying it praying for it um and now uh since him and kim k broke up he seems like he sort of drags around this half naked woman and uh, is about to launch a, uh, a porn site. So the guy it, can kind of do it all. He does have the vibe now of a guy who put like a model in a grocery bag. Like he, he does, he walks <laughs> around like he's, he's, you know, dropping yeah, yeah. off a lady in a bag for someone. I, I, I don't quite get where even where his fashion's gone. It's like he was apparently at Disneyland recently and whoever he's dating currently wasn't even wearing shoes. He's just walking around and like, you know, Kmart plastic and yeah. no shoes. Yes. Um, he's dating this, or is actually, I think it's his wife now, but she's a uh, archi architect and uh, supposedly a genius, which is always fun for me to say. Mm, just like Kanye. Uh, yeah, just like Kanye. And she's 
apparently in charge of his, she's like the chief architect person over at Yeezy and they're married. Oh, they're married. They're married. Okay. <laughs> they're now married and he's kind of just. They are married. Okay. So they're... they are married. I'm changing every two seconds. And he brings her around in the sheer tops in public places. Um, and like, she seems like she's totally okay with it. I don't know if it's in our heads. We're like, he has to be forcing this on her, but she seems to be, I don't know, like 100% behind him, whatever she's doing, she's into it. She stands up for him. Um, she's not bad looking lady. I'll tell you that. But uh, yeah, she's blowing him in Italy. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah, they had a very like fast food kind of vibe to it. Like they really had to get it and get out fast. He's just on a boat. He's like, all right, let's make this quick. I got to go do a podcast in two minutes. I have to go complain about Jews for six hours. So. <laughs> <clears throat> he still manages to get into my timeline. God damn it. Um, all right, let's do one more, one more story before I, uh, before I call it a pod here. Or I like nose. this one from, Chris what yeah I know sorry if I keep blowing my nose oh you're fine I'm trying to do it out of frame um Chris Hemsworth takes blame for love and thunder <laughs> this is something, uh, that came out of a variety article that just came out this is a I don't know one of these pieces that Chris Chris Hemsworth PR person is probably like we should probably we should do something um let's get you uh, out there talking about your roles and how you want to do more and then you know and this is the the sort of the lead story which is he got caught up in the improv and the wackiness um, and sort of feels bad about how the uh, those films ended or were last left. Mm, yeah. He said, um, I got caught up in the improv and the wackiness and I became a parody of myself. I didn't stick the landing, which, you yeah. know, it's it, that's an interesting way to put it. Maybe he's trying to like pivot back to being taken a little more seriously or something. It is funny to me, like, the idea of doing like a bad improv set and then having to apologize for it like two years later being like, Oh, yeah. I just, you know, I, I yeah. yes ended and I zigged when you zagged and it really ruined my whole image with that 15 minute improv set. But instead it was like during a $300 million movie with like a thousand jobs on the line for this franchise to continue. Right. Yeah. He, he sort of goes on and it's, and so, so this article I think is doing a couple of things. It's, it's, um, he calls out filmmakers that he would love to work with like Scorsese and Tarantino and Spielberg and um, all these folks. And it's him recognizing that, yes, I did the muscly action guy thing, but I can do a whole lot more. Um, mm -hmm. I'm proving that by doing roles like uh, Furiosa or whatever. He's claiming his Furiosa character will show a whole other. And I, and I believe him. I think he's a great actor. Yeah. I think he's actually got incredible comedic, Shops. Um, and I don't know, when I saw Love and Thunder, we were at G4 still at the time. I remember seeing it with B Comp and Vanessa. And uh, we walked out of the theater and we're like, that was fine. I mean, yeah. it, was a, it was fine. Like, fine. It, it was really wacky. I liked Ragnarok. So I liked a lot of the jokes that were in Love and Thunder. Um, but this was also like right at the groundswell of these sort of right wing go woke, go broke. Like these guys were just forming out of the ooze, you know, they were coming <laughs> out and they were starting to realize that they could get clicks based on, Oh, well let, let's just trash everything that Disney has going on because they're taking away like our, our chiseled hot manly men and they're putting women in roles, mm -hmm. God forbid. And uh, this was like very early in their evolution. So this was a, like a crucible for these dudes at the time. I think there were only like the geeks and gamers guys and like the quartering. The um, primordial like ooze the, the of geeks and gamers. And, yeah. Yeah. And now there's so many of them. Um, One of them figured out how to do an eye feels... warping effect in Photoshop. And that's when it was over for all of us. Oh dude, it was over. Put the red laser beam eyes in mm -hmm. there. Uh, so, sometimes it felt like a security guard for the team. Hem Hemsworth said, I would read everyone else's lines and go, oh, they got way cooler stuff. They're having more fun. What's my character doing? It was always about, you've got the wig on, you've got the muscles, you've got the costume. Where's the lightning? Yeah, I'm a big part of this thing, but I'm probably pretty repla replaceable. Um, so I think he was just like, wanted to feel like his character was doing the cool stuff that other characters were doing instead of just being the, uh, 
the hot Aryan Greek yeah. god. And this so feels like I, an ex-boyfriend or something recounting his relationship. I like I was still in shape, this. but you know, a couple years in, I just felt like, did you even need me anymore? Which is ironically right. the, the condition yeah, yeah. his character is in in that movie. I guess maybe he just acted too hard and it's really stuck with him. Yeah, he went full method. Um, I like I like Chris Hemsworth. I am excited to see him in uh, Furiosa. I, I like when they ug up a hot guy. I really do. It's like so brave. Mm -hmm. So brave when they put a prosthetic nose on these dudes and they expect them to go out and deliver a performance. It's like, wow. Um, but I think he is a great actor and... He's also not doing himself any favors if he's trying to branch up by doing all these like Netflix action movies. I feel like maybe he should do more of the talkies. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, I best was, of luck, Chris Hemsworth. I was watching some YouTube video on Ryan Reynolds' career, and I wish I could say who is making these points because I'm about to just steal them. But their basic point was um, like he's so successful and he's made so much money. You would think he would do like a couple for him, a couple like kind of artsy projects where he gets to express whatever he feels like to express in, inside but instead he's only done exactly the same type of movie his entire career while running uh like a a, a a wealth management app so i think maybe now we're just into the generation of actors that are just super down to be the brand except for maybe chris hemsworth who's who's feeling that that siren call back to being an artistic buffed guy yeah. that does action yeah yeah that's true god does he have a, a wealth management app he was the Mint Mobile guy, or whatever, finance app. Oh, oh, oh I see, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true, man. And I also, think he, it's cool. he loads I up his movies cool with there whiskey. Are, you can stay in one lane for your whole career. Yeah, for sure. But apparently he also, he has like six other companies and they, they appear this in all Deadpool of his movies. This movie's gonna crush. I think so, I think so. That's his, that's the one for him yeah, that's coming back. Uh, it's gonna crush. All it's right. gonna crush. It's it's uh, they're in the middle of doing reshoots right now, and um, and so, oh, shit. um, uh oh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, yeah I can hear. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, so they're gonna finish up reshoots. They're coming up to the wire on that movie. That'll be huge. I'm guessing a billion dollars. And um, yeah, I can't wait. It's gonna be Disney's only movie all year. Saddle up. By the way, if you guys have been uh, gifting subs, gifting biddies in cases chat, now is the time where you get your nice little pat on the back, a little shout out from the case man himself. Mm. Um, we will see you tomorrow for our uh, Patreon. I'll, I'm, I'm going to be trying to stream if I feel better, um, probably in the afternoon, um, if I do right before the uh, Patreon. And obviously, a big shout out to Hard Audio cables.com promo code quio save yourself 15 percent, and that's it for me case uh, um, we're gonna do x-men tomorrow as well yes Ooh, nice nice choice all right chad if there's any particular beat you want me to punish your ears with uh this week let me know i'll run through these <laughs> subs looks like it's not a super long list so uh i can really lean into each of these <laughs> God, why am I so bad at finding where these start? Okay, there it is. Seinfeld beat? Oh, I'm on my Wale. I'm in my Wale era. Okay, Seinfeld yeah. beat. Seinfeld trap beat, please. You got to put trap in if you want to find the, the, the YouTube beats. Seinfeld in the trap reloaded. I can do it. I can rap in my Seinfeld voice. Everybody's got to... Oh. What the fuck? Oh, my God. Where's the beat? Jesus Christ! Oh, where's the beat? We fucking going in like Kramer in the streets. Yeah, I'm Seinfeld. Best believe it's going down. We got a follow coming in from Whoa Buster Brown. We got a shadow coming in from Miss Gina Darling. This a show about nothing, but here is the thing. I'm taking you bitches from seven to eleven. Got a sub coming in from Super B67. Local puppet, they ain't muppet, but they never fucking stop it. They don't stop it with the sub coming for 16 months. We love it. Hype train, level one. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three. With the sub on the floor, we got Uncle Phil 2K 100 bits. We got a hype train to achieve because we are the shit. Well, we'll phone a she won't, she's not here. Entity 10011 is here with the gifted oh. sub. One month love.
Matt Liddell, five streak from hell. Okay, I'm taking you bitches to the five Seinfeld school. Comedy is back, thanks to Dr. Cool with the sub. But that is just the start. We got 18 months from Waco's R. We got a thousand fucking bits coming into my apartment. It is Seinfeld's apartment. You're in Seinfeld's apartment. Kenji058 with the six with four. And that's it, King of Bacon with 400 bits, oh my god! <clears throat> and that's the Seinfeld rap. See you guys tomorrow! <laughs> Bye everybody! Hey, See you Cass, have a good one! On the crime side, the New York Times side Staying alive was no job, had second hands Moms bounced on old man So then we moved to Shallon land A young dude, the rock and the go-to No goose, only way I begin to G.O. was drug loot And let's start it like this, son Rolling with this one and that one Pulling out gats for fun But it was just a dream for the team Who was a fiend, started smoking wounds at 16 And running up in gates and doing hits by high stakes Making my way off Fire escape, no question.